Hi guys, happy Monday. It is Monday Motivation with Mary Fulton at Mary Fulton Fit. And today we are gonna be talking about um, spring is in the air, new seasons, new changes. And um, so let me tag some friends out there and hopefully you guys will join me tonight. And um, if you're here, please put hello in the chat box. I'd love for this to be interactive and get us motivated for a new season. Who is excited for a new season? Give me a hello. Hi, I see one person's on with me right now. I'm just gonna share this and oops, yikes. And we're gonna get started. Let me just share this post. Um, and then we will get started right away, you guys. Join us. Okay, team. So, number one, let's talk about a couple things. Hi there, Erin. Hi, Amy. Thanks for stopping by. If you guys are here, give me a hello in the chat box. Just throw me a thumbs up if you are ready for spring and a new season and new changes. I want to talk about a few things tonight. So number one, I wanted to say, you know, not only is it a new season for us, spring is coming um, on March 20th, which is my birthday, <laughs> but also, you know, we have some more changes coming our way. Um, we're starting to kind of see the clouds part a little bit as far as with, with COVID and lockdown. Uh, we are beginning to um, see things open up again and life coming back little by little back to normalcy, right? Hi, Karina. What's up, Erin, Amy? And so um, I wanted to start off uh, really quick with um, with a verse, actually. So let me open up that verse really quick. And then I'm going to give you guys just some tips to get you motivated and getting going for a new season. Spring is in the air, new changes, new you, embracing new things in your life, trying new things, giving yourself that chance, setting new goals. And I have some questions for you to kind of dig a little bit deeper. A time for everything. I'm sure you've heard this. You've probably heard it at funerals. You've heard it at inspirational moments in people's lives. It's from Ecclesiastes chapter three. There is a time for everything, a season for every activity under the heavens, a time to be born and a time to die, a time to plant and a time to uproot, a time to kill and a time to heal, a time to tear down and a time to build, a time to weep and a time to laugh, a time to mourn and a time to dance, a time to scatter stones and a time to gather them, a time to embrace and a time from refrain from embracing, a time to search and a time to give up, a time to keep and a time to throw away, a time to tear and a time to mend, a time to be silent and a time to speak, a time to love and a time for hate. It's in here, right? This is interesting, right? <laughs> These are emotions we feel, a time for war, a time for peace. And um, and it keeps going, right? Because um, in Ecclesiastes, if you've ever read it, well, it has a lot of knowledge in that book and, um, you know, talking about just what do workers gain from their toil? And it, and it kind of keeps going. But we're going to stop right there at the end of verse eight and just talking about that there is a time and a season for all things things that are good things that are hard challenges blessings um time to be born a time to to die um and so there's there are moments for all of this and i wanted to encourage us and also talking about new seasons you know when january came maybe you were setting some goals um, give me, throw it up there in the chat box or give me a thumbs up if you set some goals for yourself for the beginning of 2021, right? Did you? Awesome. And if you want to share one of your goals, throw it up in the chat box. Whether you've accomplished it or not, or you're working on it, throw it in the chat box. So, you know, we don't need a new year or a new season. We just really need a new moment, a new minute, a new day to start fresh. But it always is really fun when a new season comes in. So let's talk about a couple things that we can work through to help us in this new season to maybe accomplish some of the goals. We wanna look back on the goals of January. What goals did you set in January? Does anybody wanna share one? Maybe you set the goal of losing weight or moving more or spending time with your family or working on you know, being kinder to others or, or maybe serving somebody. And, and how, have you, how have you done on these goals? Was it something attainable or was it something that, you know, kind of dipped down and it wasn't something that you could uh, commit to for a long period of time? So these are things you want to look at and kind of look back upon on those goals. Um, and, and now it is a new season. So how did those goals go for you? 
Was that something that was feasible for you? Or did you maybe set too high of a standard for yourself? Or did you not set up a plan for that goal, right? That's really important to you guys. It's easy to say, hey, I wanna lose 40 pounds, but there's a lot of work to lose each pound and, and there, there has to be a game plan, right? Um, so look back on, on, you know, since January and what things have gone well and what things can you be working on, right? But I also, before we even move into the new season, I wanted us to sit back for a second and think about this last year because we are on our year anniversary. Um, it is like on the 17th for us anyway here in uh, California. Um, and so for many of you, you're in different places. But for us, uh, the 17th was kind of like that big, everything started shutting down. And here we are a year later. Um, so let's look back for a second. Take a moment, grab a pen or a notebook. What things went well for you in this last year that you feel good about? that you were able to you know, push through and, and get through? Were there some trials that you went through that you feel good about? It's a good time to reflect as this new season begins and think back upon last March. Where were you last March? Were you in a lot of fear? Have you grown a lot? Have these challenges that we've gone through made you see life differently? Throw something in the chat box for me right now. Tell me one growth point for you from last March to this March. Um, for me, um, I had some fears, but um, in this last year, I really worked through challenging my fears. And so if there's something that I'm scared of, I start to actually push towards it so that I can learn. Um, usually we fear things that we don't understand, that we don't know because we don't have control over them, right? Um, so as far as outside of, you know, COVID, I took a chance on a lot of different things in my life, like learning how to surf and stepping out and not being scared of those things or, or taking on this business that I did one step at a time, one baby step on a time to get to where I am today with Mary Fulton Fit. But it took a lot of challenges. It took a lot of uh, tears and um, mess ups and the whole way through. But for me, I would say my growth was stepping out in faith every day, still am, and uh, trusting the process and going with, you know, going with that dream and pushing through even when things didn't go right. That was my growth. What was your growth? Put something in the chat box. I mean, I got my coffee right now so we can chill out and we can hang out together. Tell me, look, I've got all my logos. Look. <laughs> I'm logoed out today, but I want this to be a time where we can interact with each other because you just listening to me, we can actually learn from each other and grow. So Glenda, you have something you want to share? Karina, Aaron, I don't know who's still on, Catherine, Tanya, what's one thing that you feel like a good takeaway from this last year? This last year, tell me, one good takeaway, put it in the chat box. One of you be brave soul and throw it up there. <laughs> well, I shared mine with you. And then, you know, what were some things that you feel like you could work on? Well, I still have a ton of things to work on. I've noticed that my patience is really low at home with my kids. And this is something I really want to work on. You know, being able to be patient with them as they are going through hard times, still being at home, still not back at school. So... Um, you know, and the effects of, you know, not being out in the, you know, the normal seat, what we call normal. <laughs> so for me, I really want to work on patience at home with my kids and giving them more grace. So um, I think it's important to sit back and kind of look at this year for a second and take a deep breath and take it in and remember, you know, what it was like last year, what it's like today. And taking that in so you can really, really embrace this new season. It is a new season. So now that we've gone through a whole year of lockdown, you are a different person. You will never be the same in good ways because you've grown. You've had to be stretched and pulled in a lot of different directions. Maybe in ways that you never thought that you would have to be pulled and stretched. You had to watch and see things that maybe you didn't want to see this year. It's possible. You had to live and maybe, maybe you lived in a lot of fear this year. 
So what are you gonna do with all of these things? Well, it's a new season, new beginning, things are opening up again. And let's remember this, that as things go back to normal, whatever that is, right? I don't even know what to call that, but are you still gonna have challenges in your life? Yes, right? We are definitely gonna have challenges, guys. The, the whole, you know, shutdown pandemic brought a whole nother spectrum of challenges for us. Um, but we were always going to have challenges with our families, relationships, jobs, um, situations, things. But now we have a whole new hat to wear, right? Like before, we didn't know the things that we know. Now we're going to put on this new hat. And no, we now know so many things. We've been with so much and blessed with so much and then all of the a lot of those freedoms were gone for a long time and now slowly they're going to be given back to us with responsibility what are we going to do with those i see aaron shared something i've struggled to eat healthier being home i was able to cook healthier and have the time to research recipes oh okay so aaron are you now not being home and so you're you're back out and now you're struggling with just eating healthier because you're not home as much Share with me so I can answer that question. And um, So I wanted to just touch on that and let us kind of sit with that for a little bit and really process it. It's pretty deep. There's a lot there. <laughs> There's a lot to unload. But as we look at this new season and this new chapter um, after the pandemic, how are we going to live our lives differently in a better way? Will we look to serve our neighbors in a kinder way? Will we look to serve the people in our family in a kinder way? Um, how will we approach all the things that we took for granted? Because we did, because it was just normal, right? It was normal to go into a store and not wear a mask. You know, it was normal to see people smiles. So now when I see someone smile, it makes me so happy, you know, to give somebody a hug. I feel so blessed to be able to hug a friend that I've missed, right? Right? So these are things I just wanted us to just kind of sit with for a second because it is it is pretty deep. It's a lot to unload. And for some of us, we may have just gotten caught up in being busy and stuff again that we're just kind of leaving it behind. And I want to say to you, in order to move into the new season and the new change, and really, like I talked about the caterpillar a couple weeks ago, right? The life cycle of the butterfly and like really coming out of the chrysalis is to really absorb everything that's going on inside the chrysalis and inside of you this last year. Don't push it down, don't ignore it, let it come out. Did you realize that you have a lot of fear? Did you realize that you have a lot of anxieties? Do you realize that you're struggling with depression or patience or or what? Or, or what is it? What Pull it out and get it out and go through it. It's kind of hard to, to see those things in yourself, but sometimes, or actually all the time, when we go through a struggle, when we go through hardship, it's when we actually, it's almost like a mirror is put in front of our faces and we can see the things that we really need to change and, and get rid of. So let's talk about changes and new seasons. So declutter, get through it, go through it. But we gotta declutter our mind, our hearts, our bodies right and physically so like you know spring cleaning let's think about spring cleaning mind body soul what does my body need right now my body needs to move more my body needs more vegetables my body needs more water how am I taking care of my temple yeah do you need to maybe clean out some of the stuff in your fridge or clean out some of the things that you're eating just to help you feel better yeah that's a really good way to start the new change in a new season. What about your mind? Are you watching too much news, too many social media on the phone? Is it time to kind of put some, maybe some parameters on yourself and say, okay, you know what? I'm gonna put my phone down from eight o'clock on. I'm not gonna touch it. I'm gonna let my mind rest, let myself settle and be present with my family. Those are things that I need to do. So I'm constantly on my phone. Do you need to declutter your house? Remember in the verse it said a time to keep and a time to throw away. Are there sometimes there are things that are feeling cluttery in your home and you need to kind of clean them out to clean you, to refresh you, right? 
A lot of people like to garden in the springtime, right? We gotta pull the weeds, you guys. Gotta pull the weeds and clean out the soil for the plants to grow. And we are the same. And I feel like, you know, God is so creative and so amazing because something as simple as watching a plant grow and, and taking care of a plant can teach you about life and about yourself. The weeds that come through. What are you surrounding yourself with? Hi, Roya. Hi, Glenda. What and who are you surrounding yourself with? And are those things good for you? Are they lifting you up or are they bringing you down? So new season doesn't just mean, okay, set a goal. I got to lose weight. Like, let's not even think about that. Okay. Those are great things. And we can set goals like that. But let's think about like the deeper issues, like cleaning house, mentally, emotionally, you know, physically in your home. What things do you need to declutter to help you breathe and be able to feel free, right? Are there things or people or something in your life that's dragging you down? So it's important to pull those weeds out because eventually they will, those weeds will take over. They'll take over your beautiful plant that you're trying to grow. And, and the, the, the more that we water and plant and sow those seeds, we are going to see the harvest in our lives in those things. So like in a new season, if you have a goal and you really are focusing on that goal, you will see the growth. But we also have to be patient because there's a time for everything. And just like when you plant a seed, how long does it take for that little sprout to come out? And then for it to pop out through the soil and then you finally see it, right? And then it starts to grow. And then later on comes the beautiful flower and it blooms or the beautiful piece of fruit that comes from it, right? But if we don't water it, we don't weed it, we don't declutter it so it can breathe and have, and it's in the right space, then that plant can't grow. So think about spring as like a butterfly, right? Right, coming out of the chrysalis, it has to go through the process to come out and break out and be strong. Same thing with the flat, the seed. If it's not watered, if it's not planted in the right place, then it's not gonna grow. You are the seed. Your goal is the seed that you're gonna plant. But if you don't plant it in the right foundation and in the right place, it won't have the space, right? Because your plant could be growing, but if you leave it in the small pot, what happens to it? It doesn't have space to grow. So are you also allowing yourself to have space to grow? Or are you trying to stay safe in the small pot? Spot, small pot? You guys, I was last year, I was staying safe in my small pot. Okay? I remember meeting this beautiful girl named Bree. She has a beautiful clothing line called Waylon. And I, I'm actually wearing her top right now. Yay, Bree! And I remember meeting her and... I was like, oh, this is so amazing. You have a clothing line. You're so young and that's amazing. And she's like, this is what I did. This is how I started. And I was like, wow. And I just looked at her and I was like, you're so driven. And that's amazing. I just could never do that. Well, look what I first said out of my mind. I could never do that. I put myself in a small pot and I said, this is where you're going to stay. You don't get to be a big plant, Mary. You get to be this little plant. And that's it. Because that's all. That's all I believe that can be. Right? What did we see this last year? Well, when my little pot was broken <laughs> because things changed, I decided to move up into a different pot. And then I started to outgrow that one. And I moved into another one. And I started to outgrow that one. And I moved into another one. And I'm in this pot right now. And I'm gonna outgrow this pot because you know what? I've seen that we can we just get stuck in our comfort zone. Guys, believe that you are more than just being right here. I remember saying to her, oh, I just could never do that. It's just, I don't think I can. And I just, I don't have that many people following me. And listen to all the I can'ts. So I'm going to stay in that little pot. Well, when everything closed down, I didn't have plans to jump into, you know, 10 different pots. But I decided to try something different and my comfort zone was taken away. My pot fell over and broke. I had to find a new pot. Do you have to find a new pot? Are you scared? Do you think you can't do it? Do you think other people could do it better? <laughs> do 
Me too. But if you don't take the chance, you'll never know. And I'm crying just because I wouldn't have ever taken a chance. I was really comfortable training and teaching. I was doing good. I was making good money. And I was comfortable. I was comfortable. Are you comfortable? Are you so comfortable that you won't bet on something that you would never dream that you could do? And I still doubt myself every day. I do. And I'm only sharing this with you because I want you to go out there and try it. Like, what is there to, there's so many fears and so many doubts, but like, if I could get to where I am today, like, you can too. And somebody always says, oh, the, the, it's all saturated. There's too many fitness instructors. There's too many. You know what, guys? There's not. There's so many people out there. That if you're selling makeup or you're selling shoes or you have a dream to make your own cologne or you have a dream to make the best coffee uh, cups in the world and you've got an idea, then guess what? Get out of your comfort zone. It's a new season. There's a time for everything. And you know what? You may come up through a lot of obstacles. It may not work out the way that you thought because it never does, guys. But it's more about living. And I found that stepping out of my comfort zone let me see things and meet people and experiences and learn things that I would have never, ever learned just staying in my bubble. So is it time for you to move out of this pot? Is it time to move into a different one? To spread yourself out? To spread your roots? To let yourself grow and see more sunlight and see the things that are out there? Is it your time to change pots? And guess what? The pots keep changing. <laughs> they never stop. And there's going to be wind and there's going to be rain and there's going to be animals and there's going to be everything. But you won't ever regret taking a chance and making a new change, especially when it's going to be better for you in the long run. Guys, we're going to face challenges no matter what. I could have just been a trainer and instructor and just stayed there and that's it and worked there forever and that's fine. But you know what? I always dreamed about more in my head. So if you're comfortable and you want to be comfortable and you feel really good, but I just knew that there was more for me. I just didn't know what it was and I didn't know how to get there. And I still am trying to figure it all out. <laughs> Zion, your story is encouraging. Oh, good, Zion. What are your dreams, Zion? Tanya, what are yours? Shah, Sharon, what are your dreams? Kyla, what is your dream? You guys all have dreams. And we've all been brought together for a reason. And I, you know, man, there's so many days where I'm like, oh, I'm not fit for this, God. Like, I have so many issues. And I have this and that. And God's just like, just be still and just come and just know and just share. Share your story, Mary. Share your story. We all have stories with mess ups and this and that. And, you know, guys, at the end of the day, we're all human. But I just, I want to encourage you to say it's a new season. It's a new change. Let's make some change. Let's bet on our dreams. Let's bet on the things that we want to do. Why? If everybody said no to their dreams, then we wouldn't have helicopters and airplanes and trains and cars and guitars and sitars and, and plastic and lip gloss and iPhone and a pen and paper. Right? Right? So you have something to share. Go share it. I know. How do I do it? I don't know how to get there. Yeah, it's a giant mountain. It is. So you just start with step one lay the foundation. So let's lay the foundation for you, right? Make a vision board. What is your vision for your new change? Maybe your new change is starting a brand new business. Maybe you want a fitness channel. Maybe you want a hat business. Maybe you want to just lose 10 pounds. Awesome. Write it down. Make a vision board. What do you really want it to look like? 
You have to sit and have some sort of vision of where you're going. Otherwise, then there's no, no goal to strive for. And guess what? Once you start moving, those goals are going to be checked off. So you have to make even bigger goals for yourself. We cut ourselves short and say, I just want to do this. But there's so much more. So change the words you use. Make a vision board. And then check in on the goals. Right? I want to lose 10 pounds. You know, I'm doing this program. Program's not working after two weeks. I haven't lost anything. Okay, revisit your goal. Maybe this program isn't working for you. Maybe you're not doing it the way you're supposed to. Maybe you need to tweak it a little bit to work better for you. That's at the end of it. You need to see how it works for you. And then here's another thing. Everyone needs a coach. Everybody needs a mentor, a team of friends, a group of friends, somebody you share everything with. You need that. Ask. Something that I just learned this last week is ask. You never know what people are going to say. I asked and something really cool is coming right now because I just asked and I'll let you guys know more about that. But I, something really cool is coming because I just said, Hey, do you think we could partner or we could do something like this or you could sponsor me or, and then something came of it. You never know until you ask, you know what? There's people that have already done the wheel. So like if you're out there and you want to do what I'm doing, then call me, reach out to me because I've already laid down my journey and gone through my hiccups so I can share mine with you to help you, right? There's other people out there, ask them, right? Like, hey, how do you start a, you know, the lady who did the um, Spanx, she has such an amazing story, you guys. Um, I saw her in Tony Robbins, the lady who made Spanx. She seriously just called Bloomingdale's and was like, can I come and meet you and bring my, you know, my Spanx? And they said, yes. And people were like, how did you get them? How did you get them? She's like, I just asked. That's it. So sometimes you just have to ask, hey, Julie, how did you start your, you know, purse business? And Julie, she's like, sure, you know, let me tell you. Because I want to share my journey with you so that you don't maybe make all the mistakes I made or or when you get there, you can avoid this one and turn left instead of right. <laughs> I think most of us want to see other people hit their dreams and goals. There's no reason for that, you know? There's no reason for that threat or feeling like somebody's coming after you unless you're, unless you're coming after them in the wrong way. But you know what I'm saying? So ask. Find a mentor. Find a coach. Maybe you need a coach to talk to. I have a beautiful girl named Mina. She's going to be joining us uh, not this Thursday, but next Thursday. She has she is a, a coach for a life coaching. So, you know, maybe you need a life coach. Maybe you need a trainer. Maybe you need me in your life. You want to do more one-on-ones or something. Maybe you need, you need um, just some advice from an older mom. Advice from a, you know, somebody who, who uh, already knows how to do something. Just go there. Get that mentor. Get that coach. So really today, I just want to leave you with, it's a new season, new changes, new goals. How long have you stayed in your small little pot and it's time to move pots, time to grow. Plants can't grow without the right foundation, without the things that they need. Surround yourself with the things and people in your life that are gonna be good for you. Get rid of the weeds, weed it out, get rid of the things, declutter your life, your mind, your soul, from the things that hold you back from who you're supposed to be. And make a vision board. Check in on these goals that you have. They're not going to be perfect, guys. No goals come out perfect. Nobody's perfect, but we get better. And if something doesn't work for you, try something else, right? And then everybody needs a coach. Find someone to talk to. Find a buddy. Find your moving buddy. Like I said before from Toy Story. Somebody who's going to help you get there and give you that push. Sometimes you need someone to motivate you and say, you know, I need someone to motivate me sometimes. You know, I'm motivating everybody else. It's so nice when I have someone say, hey, Mary, stop it. You got this. Let's go. Let's go. And I'm like, okay, thank you. It reminds me of my dad. You know, my dad was very much about like cheering me on and he left me early and I, I've missed him ever since, but he's right here. And I know that he's like, Come on, Mari, vamos. Vamos, ponerle las pilas. <laughs> That's where I get that. 
crazy from from my dad. <laughs> so thanks to him. Um, I know he'd be very proud. I know he would. He'd be really proud of me. Um, I want to make him proud. He came here a long time ago from Argentina, didn't speak English, started working, you know, hardly for anything. And then him and his brother made a furniture business. And I didn't realize how amazing that was until, until now, really. I didn't realize, I just, it just was, you know? I didn't realize like my dad, a little carpenter from Ar Argentina, half Russian, half Argentinian, spoke three languages <laughs> and started a business here as an immigrant. What, what, a, what a badass, right? <laughs> and so I, I always think like when I feel down, I'm like, I gotta do this for my papa and make Juan proud and uh, show him that, you know what? You worked your booty off, I'm gonna work mine off too. And I'm gonna keep going. I'm gonna keep going with your legacy, Dad. Like, push, dream big, make it happen. Pretty cool story, right? No, I'm gonna cry. Can't talk about my dad without crying. <laughs> it's been a long time too, because you know I was 16 a long time ago. <laughs> so I just wanted to share that with you guys. I hope that this has touched your heart. Put something in the chat box. Tell me something that your your takeaway from tonight, please. Put it in the chat box right now. What's your takeaway from tonight? Please share one thing with me that you're gonna take away and um, you're gonna put into action right now. Let's go, I wanna see it. What are you gonna put into action right now? Come on, thank Zion, I love you. Donna, what are you gonna put into action right now? Roya, Tanya, Stephanie, Kyla, Terry, what are you putting into action today? Just type it in the chat box right now. Maybe for you, it's like a vision board. Maybe it's getting out of the small pot. Zion, push through and persist when things get discouraging. Amen. Zion, life is about pushing through because things are never perfect. <laughs> they just aren't. I've learned that over and over again this year. So keep going. Guess what? You're doing something right when there are obstacles. That means you're pushing through challenges, you guys. When another obstacle comes, that doesn't mean that you're not supposed to be there. Sometimes the obstacles come like almost on purpose to derail you from what you're supposed to be doing, okay? So push past them, keep going. To not feel guilty for looking after me. Good, Glenda, I love that, yes. Glenda, you gotta take care of you so you can bless and take care of others, right? I love it. So how are you going to take care of you, Glenda? Put it in the chat box. Tell, give me two things. Kyla, dream big. All right, Kyla, give me that one dream. I want to see it. I want to hear it. I want you to write it out. So good, Zion. Yes, keep pushing. Those obstacles are coming because you're supposed to be right where you are. And more waves are coming, baby. Don't let negative self-talk. Yes. Get rid of it. You're going to hear it. You know what? You're going to feel like you don't know enough. You're not good enough. Guess what? Learn more. Keep going. Push through. If you don't know how to do something, then learn and figure it out. You just have to do it. That's what you got to do. Figure out how to get through the obstacles. Yes. Yay, Susie Feinberg! My first principal ever. I love you. I cheer you on. You are one of the most amazing women that I know. Thank you for stopping by, Susie. We are we are finishing up our spring into new, but I hope that you'll go back and rewatch it asking everybody one takeaway that they had from tonight. But you were an inspiration in my life. Thank you for being there for me as a first year teacher going through a lot of challenges. This woman's amazing. Thank you, Susie Feinberg. It is such a blessing to have you for so many years as a principal. Um, I love it, you guys. You need to dream big. You gotta keep pushing through the obstacles. And uh, remember, I mean, just like I said to Zion right now, when you are going through the obstacles, know that that's just where you're supposed to be. Because things are hard doesn't mean that's not where you're supposed to be. It just means you have to work through them to get to the next place. My first year as a kindergarten teacher, I had some obstacles, Miss Susie knows, and I had to push through them. <laughs> and it didn't mean that I wasn't supposed to be a teacher. I just had to get through them and get through some hard stuff. and. I learned a lot about me and it got me ready to where I am today. So every obstacle that comes your way, consider it 
joy, brothers and sisters, when you come against trials of many kinds. It's in the Bible. <laughs> joy, God, why do you want me to consider it joy? Because it's producing perseverance. And it's producing this beautiful person that you're supposed to become. You know, when things are just handed to us, when we just get things, we don't appreciate them. I watch my kids. I can hand them $10. They don't know what it feels like to earn $10. When they have to wash my car and pull weeds and do stuff, then they appreciate it. If I just give it to them, it's not. So embrace your obstacles. Embrace your challenges. Know that they will make you that stronger, more beautiful, refined, amazing soul you're supposed to be. Because at the end of the day, this all fades away. And what's left is right here. Right here. This is what's left. So what are you gonna what are you gonna put? What are you gonna sow for the spring? Right? What are we gonna sow? What changes? I love you guys. Oh, before I leave, I want to let me tell you what you can sew with me <laughs> in April. So let me show you these awesome little containers I have today. And you're like, what are these? Well, I'm super excited. They are in the MF shop today. And my challenge for um, April is going to be MFF, Fuel Your Body. And what this is, is I'm going to teach you how to have healthy eating habits, um, learn how to food prep that works for you. Um, give you mindset motivation and teach you what's actually worked for me for the last five years to stay healthy and put putting good things into my body that really help me. Do I like pizza? Yes. Do I have burgers? Yes. I do have these things, you guys. I've learned to balance my life in a way where I still enjoy the things that I like, but then for the most part, I try to stick to looking at my little containers and using these to help me. Now, a lot of you have probably seen these around, but when you join my challenge, you get all of the containers, okay? But you also get me as your coach for the month. And in the month of April, I will lead you through this challenge and help you learn how to food prep, plan, and everything. So all you gotta do is go to my Mary Fulton Fit shop, maryfultonfit.com, go to shop and click MF Fuel Your Body. Purchase these, you'll get an automatic email. Please make sure that you say subscribe to the email. You get an automatic email with what we're gonna do, the calendar and everything, and get loaded into my group. Um, Kyla, I just mailed yours today, they're coming. Um, and I sent you an extra special treat because uh, you pay for a lot of shipping for Canada. <laughs> but um, it's gonna be a really good time for us to grow together. I bought 100, I want 100 people to join me. The more the merrier, we are going to learn new things, create new habits, make some new changes. When I got these five years ago, I didn't know what to do with them. I now know how to do this with my eyes closed and it has become a part of my life for the last five years. So what I wanna say is when you find the right thing that helps you, you can grow. And at beginning, it was hard, you guys. I was like, how do I food prep? How do I count these? What do I do? How many do I have? What's gonna happen? Yep. But now I know, because I'm five years into it, I've been using them forever. It's kind of like counting your macros without having to count your macros. It also helps you with portion sizes and it helps count your food groups. So really, it's kind of like all the great things rolled into one helps you balance your life. And so that's what I'm gonna teach you. So join me and join in. Um, go to mfmaryfultonfitshop.com and get yours today, you guys. I have 100 spots. Actually, now I have, I sold 10, so I've got 90 spots left. Get yours today, and um, we'll be starting April 1st, okay? So have an amazing day, and don't forget to join me live Wednesday, March 17th for our big um, party MF mashup workouts. And um, it'll be a year anniversary of my first live workout with you guys. So love you so much. Thanks for being a part of Team Stronger Together, mind, body, and soul. God bless you guys. Have an amazing day.